Good morning. It's Tuesday, May 16th. And yes, it's morning again. So uh, we're starting out talking. We got a, I got a lot to talk about today. Uh, quite a few things, um, including ChatGPT, Berkshire Hathaway, um, some, some earnings from Home Depot, um, SE reported some earnings. I think somebody asked me about that, some questions, and a huge insider buy from somebody we've heard from before. Uh, along with the CNBC top 50 disruptor list from a qu- question on our Facebook group. So if you're not part of the Facebook group, uh, go to the link tree down below. Uh, if you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts and would like to see the charts, join the YouTube. All of those things can be found in the link tree in the link down below. Um, so follow along. Here is Spy. And where do we stand as of today? From a four-hour standpoint, you're still in. It had a buy at 411. Um, you're trading at 413. If we go back and we look at the weekly, uh, you've got a little baby green candle on top of that uh, nine day. It's giving us even less, even less indication of what's to come. But when you want to talk about macro, one of the big boys is Home Depot. They just reported. And from the title of the YouTube um, uh, video that I just did, Home Depot earnings last year's growth is this year's decline. That's the theme. Um, And you're seeing this when they reported. So their their earnings per share beat, but their revenue declined by a good amount. Um, They gave horrible guidance saying that the revenue year over year for the rest of the year will decline. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It means that last year was so good that this year's decline will probably bring the stock price down. Remember, stock prices are based on two things, who's buying and who's selling. When people hear bad news, doesn't matter that 2023 is better than 2021. It's not better than 2022. Buyers are very, uh, you know, fickle. I guess is what you'd say. Um, But they gave really bad guidance. This alone brought the Dow down, the expected open, down by 100. Right now you're down by about 80, so it started to come back. It's down 2.4%. This dipped down to the 27 handle, 270 range. I would personally say if you can get this particular stock at 270, I think you're doing pretty well. Um, $270 brings you back towards um, October of last year, which is the October lows. When you hear about uh, $3,400 on the S&P, when you hear about $3,500 on the uh, S&P, that's where we were in the October lows. You've come all the way back. This reached $347 at its high right there. Um, if we go to Finviz and we go to HD and we look at the 52-week range, 347.25 was the high. You're 16% below your 52-week high. You're only 9% above your 52-week low. Your PE is 17, so it's eh, it's okay. You're getting a 2.9% dividend. It is down 8% this year. That's how bad this year looks to last year. Last year, this thing was on the rise. If we go back to TrendSpider and we will look at a weekly, uh, last year, you were looking at the decline here is where you started to start to see this. I'm sorry. I, I should be talking about 2021. 2021, when we started to come out of the pandemic, this thing just exploded. Uh, people wanted to uh, make improvements to their house. Uh, interest rates were super, super low. And then you started to see it decline. It's continued to decline. On the weekly, you're at the 200-day. Where were you on the 200-day um, last? Well, 2018 crisis, when they first tried to raise interest rates. Uh, pandemic. You haven't been this down down this low on this stock for a very long time. Uh, so I do think that is a buying opportunity. From a short-term or today perspective, I would think 270 is a good price to get this at. It brings you back to October. Will you see it lower? It just depends. Um, I, if you go to your Home Depot, like I go to a Home Depot, and it's packed, I mean, I couldn't get a parking space in Atlanta the last time I went. So 
I don't necessarily believe that this is a store problem or that the store has fallen out of favor. I just think people uh, did things to their houses in 2021, 2022 came about, and we're starting to see it just level off a little bit. I don't think we're seeing a systemic problem, but higher interest rates, the broken economy, the bank crisis, um, could you see credit crisis with the consumer? That could add into this. But just know Home Depot missed, I th I, and again, I think it's just year over year um, s problem with the store. If we take a look at Lowe's in comparison, which is, I think they report later this week, um, they report uh, May 22nd, so next week. This one has been in decline too. It's down 2%. It's under $200. I, I can I, This one, I've said it before, I think under $200 you buy it, over $200 you sell it. Will it get over 200? Absolutely. At some point in time. Uh, this is significantly more focused on the consumer. Home Depot is focused on the contractor uh, for the consumer and uh, Lowe's is more uh, focused on the consumer. But Home Depot, they typically report first. Lowe's kind of falls in line. Uh, you're not seeing this one under its 200 day. It's still, you know, the, the actual, remember Home Depot, if we go to Finviz, the PE is 17. Lowe's is a little cheaper. Um, well, it has to be more expensive. It kind of flipped around. Um, 20%, 20 is where they're at. And they're up 1% to kind of hang on to their gains with, again, Home Depot kind of down. So, I, I, again, if you can get Home Depot for a long-term play, I don't think it's a short, short-term play whatsoever because I think we continue to see some weakness. <clears throat> uh, some big boys came out with some some disclosures. Berkshire, their 13F came out. Um, they added to their city and bank account, or I'm sorry, it first came out that City and uh, Bank of America were additional shares. They did not buy additional shares. They're just inheriting shares through a subsidiary that they bought. The big bet that they took, and this stock is way up, is Capital One. This one crossed up, I think, about a week or so ago um, on the four-hour algorithm. Uh, actually, it was May 12th, so last week. Um, I, I believe I went over it and I said, hey, you know, the credit crisis, I didn't like this one. Well, Warren Buffett's betting on it now. It is up 6% at 94. Let's see. This one, it got you in at 87. So 94, 87 to 94, almost a 10% gain. It's up 6% today alone. Um, this one's getting the button hook. You're below the 200 day. I think with Buffett in this one, you probably got 112 back to the to, to its highs. But re, me, realize he is in it for the long term. Big, big one. Uh, debt ceiling. We still have this um, debt ceiling kind of hanging over our heads. Uh, not to pardon the pun. But the debt ceiling is there. Um, if you listen to Republicans, we haven't made any, any uh, progress. Uh, there's a Washington Post article that says the Republicans refuse <laughs> – uh, to accept um, closing some tax loopholes, uh, which is interesting because they want to cut spending, but they don't want to close um, tax loopholes. You know, one of the the government needs more money. You either get it on the revenue side or you get it on the cost side, cutting costs. If you think we're spending too much, then maybe cut, you know, close some tax loopholes, cut the spending, and increase. You know, by cut closing some tax loopholes. Oh, sorry, special interests. That's right. Uh, all your uh, Congress people are in the back pocket of special interests. So understand, the only reason they don't want to close those tax loopholes is not because it's bad for the government. It's bad for the economy. None of that. Absolutely zero percent of that. It's because they have special interests. Um, there was some discussion about. Uh, I posted this particular Twitter thread. It's from a group, a Twitter uh, feed called Chat GPT Trader, and it's the Chat GPT Fund. These guys basically went through, CNN um, uh, did a an analysis, and Chat GPT, it was found, can pick stocks better than top fund managers. That's a big kind of, hey, clickbait headline. It doesn't do, you know, again, we don't know because ChatGPT has just come out, but from a short-term perspective, maybe it can. Um, so this particular ChatGPT trader, 
uh, gave it $50,000. And the fund officially went live. And it's outperforming SPY. Uh, yesterday alone, just yesterday, they made 0.7%. It was a $326 gain. I particularly want to point out that this is a degenerate. <laughs> They're trading in Robinhood. You can see on the screen right now, Chat GPT fund is trading in Robinhood. Danger, danger, danger. Now, I do say there. Uh, I've read through this thread. I've read their stocks. Um, it's a social score is what they've done. Is they asked Chat GPT, "Hey, give give these stocks a score," and they gave it a score. And you see, see, it's zero to one hundred, and they list the top ones here. Um, it's a good list. I'd pick and choose from this list. Um, Berkshire, fantastic. Google, they put G-L-O-G-L. -O -O Not sure why. Uh, I probably will ask them. Um, D.R. Horton, D-H-I, Amazon, um, Equinox, uh, AVG, which is Broadcom, First Solar, which had a huge day. Um, Apple is down here. So it's a good list. I like this one. Uh, I was on YouTube Live a little bit about, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes ago. And I said, and I talked about it yesterday, I think Bard is better. So I went to Bard and I said, can you help me put together a stock portfolio that will outperform the S&P? It says sure. Uh, but it, it doesn't necessarily give me a portfolio. It asked me to build a portfolio. It says make sure you diversify your holdings, invest in companies with strong fundamentals, invest for long term. Uh, those are three keys to this entire podcast. I told you, you can bet on short-term stuff, um, but it is a bet. Real big money comes from long-term. Now, what's interesting is it gave me five stocks. It gave me Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Tesla, and Visa. Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft make up a large portion of my personal portfolio. You guys know Apple is close to it's between 30 and 40 percent of my portfolio it just Matt depends on um, how it moves but it's a large portion of my portfolio Amazon I have a big stake in it now here's what you have to know about Amazon uh, while Apple has continued to to thrive when we go to Amazon you're you're in it 106 on the algorithm it's at 111 so you're doing well but look at the weekly I mean this is a 170 180 dollar stock uh, back in 2021, it has come down almost in half. So I I haven't sold. I've been adding to it, but I, I like that particular one. Um, you know, Microsoft, I've added to it. It's done really, really well. Tesla, you guys know, I said at 160, I'm close to the lower 160s. I'm going to start my position. I sold this. I made a mistake. Every time I sell uh, Tesla. It's a mistake. I sold back here at about 120, 130. Uh, I tax loss harvested. I took some gains, but I should have waited. I mean, it almost doubled right after I sold it. I didn't get back in. Um, I should have gotten back in, but I do th see 166 is where it's trading right now. I, I want to get in under 165, but I don't hold that one. Visa, I don't hold either. Uh, Visa is one that I've been waiting for it to get under 200. It's a 232. In my mind, it's just a little too expensive, but it's been on this run. I mean, take a look at this weekly chart if we want a uh, weekly chart of Visa. Um, it's debt. It got down here uh, in October with the October lows. It was here at 180. What a great company to buy at 180. Again, Bart is right. Uh, I like Bard a little bit more, but I would absolutely, if you guys are interested in trading, interested in beating the S&P, uh, follow ChatGPT Fund. It's ChatGPT Trader is the Twitter handle. I think they're doing, they're, they, read, read the thread. I posted the, tw the thread in the private Facebook group. It's a great thread. Uh, their fundamentals are really good. I think they're going to do well. Uh, I think ChatGPT can do that for them well. Uh, I don't know how often they're going to rebalance it, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I like what they're doing. Uh, I'm going to try and do something with Bard. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, speaking of Microsoft, uh, Activision Blizzard, <laughs> the deal was approved by the EU. 
Um, it's interesting because, remember, it was the UK that denied the deal. And that was right around this time um, where it gapped down. Now you're looking at a gap between 80 and 85, and you're trading at 77. Uh, with the EU uh, basically saying the deal can go through, <clears throat> I'm not sure how it goes. Um, the question was poised to um, Sasha Nadella, uh, who is their CEO. If you have to um, do business in the EU, but you can't do business in the UK, um, is that a, is that something that you'd still go through with the deal? And he said, you know, he sidestepped it. He, obviously, he's not going to answer. They're going to go through with the appeal. Appeals do are successful sometimes, but a very small percentage of the time. Uh, we're talking single digit percentage points of time. So it's not likely that the the um, uh, that the uh, the Brits will uh, basically reverse this decision. There is some political talk that maybe the U.S. got Britain to actually deny this so that they didn't necessarily have to do it. And then the EU didn't didn't kind of play play ball with the, the Americans um, because let, the current administration is not big on allowing a deal like Microsoft and Activision going through. Uh, Warren Buffett's 13F didn't say he sold his position. So I think he's still in it. I think he's holding on to it. It's not, you know, if it goes to, you know, back to 50, he's not going to the poorhouse. Uh, but I, I, I like the decision of the EU because I do think that this one goes through. Am I buying into it? And I just had this discussion with Joe on, on YouTube Live. Um, it's a gamble. At 52 years old, am I willing to take this gamble? Probably. But... I don't think I'm going to do it now, and I may wait too late. This gap right here is just so enticing, and I don't see a huge gap below it. I see that gap being kind of the, the catalyst for it to go back to 85. Um, but you got to play, you know, understand that the big, the big thing is I just don't see the U.S. allowing it. So... I don't know that I'm necessarily going to go in, but I figured I'd bring it up. Um, the U.S. announced today they are buying 3 million barrels of oil to refill the strategic oil reserve. This will push up oil in the short term, I believe. 3 million barrels is not a game changer, but it does increase demand. They need hundreds of millions of barrels to actually uh, increase the strategic oil reserve. Um, so 3 million barrels is just a drop, <laughs> pardon the pun, drop in the bucket. Uh, but it has pushed it up by 0.11. Natural gas is up 2.1%, so boil is going to be up. Um, but that's interesting because we did have quite a few uh, energy names cross up as well. Uh, one that I noticed, I think somebody asked me about this. I was watching the ticker scroll yesterday and this morning, and SE, uh, C Limited, which is a software company. Let's go over it just so I'm sure of what they do. Um, consumer cyclical internet retail, um, together with this, engages in digital entertainment, e-commerce, and digital financial services in Southeast Asia, Latin America, rest of Asia. Uh, this was a big um, uh, retail. Uh, they are losing uh, $1.6 billion <laughs> um, per. It, it, it's a total hype. But year to date, it's up 70%. The target price is 101. It's currently trading at, well, closed at 88. I saw this one up in the 90s in pre-market. I was saying, God, this one has run up. I remember at, here at 70 saying, hey, it's not making money. Probably on the downslide, you got earnings coming up. I just don't like it. I like it coming down to this 67 kind of name. I, I, and I believe I went over this one. The earnings came in. They were disappointing. Look, 72 cents versus 35 cents. Uh, it is down to 6.82%. It's trading at 70, 82. So if you got in at 75, I hope you got out at 88 um, before the earnings. This is an example of playing earnings can be dangerous, uh, even though the stock is running up into earnings. Let me take a drink, a sip of water. <clears throat> mm. 
Okay. More more mouth noises for for William and the, the group on YouTube. But um, C Limited, I just saw it and I saw the earnings. I didn't read up on it. You can read up all about it. I think it's an interesting one because the target price at 101, April, benchmark company, buy, 105. They initiated coverage. Um, back in April, U- UBS buy to neutral with a $92. Again, it's an $82 stock. If you get a seven handle on this one, meaning like 79 or something like that, I think you could take that trade. Uh, I like it. So SE just came up. Sam from Facebook would like your input on DTC, uh, solo brands. Uh, from what I can tell, the screener I'm using on Finviz, it looks okay. I would rather see it below $5, but curious on my thoughts. Let's look at DTC. Here's the four-hour algorithm, uh, DTC. Solo brands are those red solo cups. Uh, it's been beaten down. Wow, this is this is a beaten down stock. Uh, trading at $5.09, so you may get it below $5. Um, I don't know why this pushed all the way up to $8 there after earnings of uh, 33, 33 cents a share. Um, I don't like the chart. Um, look at the daily. I mean, it, it's, it looks like it's just, it IPO'd at about 11. Um, yeah, it IP, well, it IPO'd up here at 22 and it's just been, I mean, let's, let's look at this. Solo brands, uh, internet retail, uh, operates direct to consumer platform, outdoor and lifestyle branded products. The company provides camp stoves under the Solo Stove. Ah, fire puts under the Solo Stove brand, uh, kayaks under the O-Root brand, paddle boards under the Isle brand. So it's an outdoor kind of adventure company um, that sells brands like that. They're losing $2 million um, per year. Earnings per this year are <laughs> expected to go down 168%. Year to date, it's up 39%. The average target price is $10.20. Its short interest is minimal, 2%. Um, 52 week range between 339 and 896. You're right in the middle there. Um, the most recent, looks like November, buy at a $7 price point. I mean, it's hard to say that it's a good one. I'm looking at March 15th, 100,000. Um, these guys are buying in the four to six dollar range. That's where I would say your target is. So while trading at five dollars, um, five dollars and nine cents, I think you wait to get to four fifty. Just looking at this daily chart, see that gap right there between four oh five and four twenty seven? I think that gap gets filled. Um, before this gap from 518 to 7 gets filled. That's just on Finvis. Now, if we go to the algorithm and we trade on the 4-hour, I'll tell you right now you're out. You made a nice, if you got in uh, in March at $4, you made a nice 66% profit there um, with the algorithm. But the algorithm doesn't have you in. I Again, look at that gap. See this gap snake right here? You can c- more clearly see it on TrendSpider. This is why I tell you TrendSpider is better than Finviz, but you have to have enough um, trading uh, dollar amount capital in your portfolio to justify the cost of TrendSpider. You can use uh, Finviz. Finviz would be all that you would really need. But this is a better, you know, try find a charting program, trading view. Um, is a free one that provides some free services. But I, I like TrendSpider. And this gap snake right here is fantastic between $4.18, $4.37. Four I like it um, You know, to, to see that gap because I do think when you come under this 200-day, you go and find that gap. So, Sam, I would say hold off. Be patient. Um, speaking of Finviz, I was on Finviz, and I went down here – to see, let me look at the top insider trades. And that name right there, Robert Dugan, it struck me. And I know Sherry's on listening on YouTube right now. So I clicked on Robert Dugan because his name reminded me of something. SMMT. We saw this guy buy $400 million 
of SMMT. I'm sorry, $500 million. But <laughs> I mean, I, you just keep adding it up. Um, 14 million, 11 million, 94 million, 376 million. Well, he bought a new one and it's only $10 million worth, but he owns a good portion of this because you can see him adding certain amounts back here um, of Pulse. And he bought about $30 million worth of this. He's a 10% owner. He's a director on the board now. PLSE uh, is the symbol. They are losing $58 million. They are not making money. They have no target price. They are not covered. Um, this is a biopharma, uh, medical instruments and supplies. They are up this year, year to date, 189% performance for the year, 441%. Crazy, crazy good. Now, here's what you have to know. This is a um, just a, a, a great, great chart when you look at it from October. Then you go long term and we look at the weekly. It's beaten down. <laughs> this was a $40 stock back here. Uh, opened at 45. Its high was 45.82. It's just been beaten down. Uh, it is still under the 200 day at $8 a share. Um, he bought at, let's see, um, $6.51 a share. It is now trading at $8 a share. Um, do I think you should buy it? I think you should do your research, but I will tell you. If we go back to SMMT and we go uh, over here doo, 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 and we look, go down to the insiders and we look, when did he make that $400 million buy? Well, it was March 6th. It was identified on March 8th. So you'd have to look at the March 8th price. Let's go back and look at the March 8th price. Well, it's interesting. March 9th, we got a buy in at 150. That's when I brought this up. Uh, because we saw it, we saw it on uh, Finviz, and I believe Sherry got into this one. Well, how's Sherry doing? Interesting enough, that initial 150, it got you, the algorithm got you out with an 8% gain. You could have gotten your 10% and gotten out. Then it gets down here to 148 on May May 2nd, uh, and it climbs up, climbs up really, really well. The algorithm still has you in. Uh, mind you, it still has you in. I think this gap between 330 and 360, and I said this before, if this performs well, you'll see that gap gets filled. But here's what you have to know. Look at the weekly. It is a beaten down stock. That right there is seven, eight dollars. Eight dollars and thirty-eight cents. And that is in August of 2021. So it was a hyped up stock. It got hyped up when he bought 400 million of it, and it's come down. You may make lower, uh, higher lows. And that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. But I'd probably wait to get this one for confirmation. Trade it on the 65 day. But I find it interesting that he buys these companies and then it continues to go up. I like it. I like it and I noticed it. Let's talk about something that came up in the private Facebook group. Uh, the CNBC top 50 disruptors list. I give this a look every time they come out with one. Uh, I like to look at it. I'm just never sure, you know, do I want all 50? Eh. You know, like Spotify. We talked about Spotify. I like Spotify. I love Spotify. Spotify pays me to do the podcast. Um, eh. Do I believe in it? They're paying Joe Rogan too much money. They're just paying too much for um for content but it's the same thing about netflix it was said that netflix was doing the same thing i like spotify skills they're never gonna make money uh those guys are just a joke uh real real i like i use um uh what's it called um that instant real real whatever it is bloom energy i like um one that really caught my eye was down here uh shopify you know i like uh, Peloton. I can't find Peloton. It's on this list. Peloton is on this list. There's Palantir is a good one. Um, Blue Apron, uh, which is just has a cost problem um, uh, because they're, it's a race to the bottom in that food, food delivery. There's Peloton. 
So Peloton's one, and I want to bring this up because I do know about Peloton. I was a Peloton user. Uh, I refused to buy the bike. Your boy, uh, yeah, I got money. I ain't buying a $2,000 bike. Uh, I went out and I bought a $200 bike off of Amazon. And I put some sensors on it and I got the app for $12. Well, Peloton spends a hell of a lot more money than $12 um, uh, servicing their, their brand, paying their influencers, uh, paying their instructors. They have said, I mean, they've moved their strategy around a lot. Um, first, they said, well, our instructors are the differentiator. Then they said, well, our technology is the differentiator. Um, then they said, well, we're going to rent the bikes to people and we're, we're going to have a subscription service on the actual hardware and the software. It just never really made sense. And they're losing money and it's just in a decline. The, it was ironic because it came up as a buy today. And I said, should I put this in? I put it in $7.42. I don't think it's a bad buy there. But the only thing that you're hanging your hat on is not that they will turn around and make money. Let's go and look at the fundamentals. They're losing $2 billion uh, this year. Uh, they have cash on hand. Uh, it doesn't even say. They don't release how much cash on hand they have. They probably have plenty of cash. They will have to cut costs again. How do they cut costs? They give away the freaking bikes. That's that. It's not a good business plan. So, you know, wh where do you go from there? You hope that they're bought. Who's going to buy them? Well, Amazon may buy them. Because you know what? If I'm an Amazon Prime member... And I can get Peloton uh, yoga. I can get Peloton workouts as part of my Amazon Prime. That is huge. I love, you guys know, Netflix um, yoga. Netflix workouts. I love it. Um, but disruptors list, I'd probably pick and choose. Do your own research. This is not just, hey, they showed up on this list. They've got to be good. Look at AI. We've talked about AI before. AI, which is C3AI. They, they're part of a Hindenburg research. Um, uh, they're, you know, it's part of a Hindenburg research uh, claim where you know, they said it's, it's based on they, – they were a company that had a different strategy, then switched to AI. Well, the CEO goes on CNBC and talks about how they have a Google prompt for their AI services. Well, Google prompt is just not a good strategy for AI. AI is a conversation. It is not a Google prompt window. This guy is a boomer talking about calculators when computers came out. So, yeah, understand that. Um, you know, just the disruptor list I like, but I'm not particularly crazy about it. Uh, okay, scans. Coke had a cross up. I talk about Coke. You want to buy it under 60. 64, it's trading at 63. It's going to go under 60 again. Buy it when it's under 60. I told you to buy it back here under 60. You would have made your 10% up here about 64, 65 if you want to get rid of it. The actual, uh, you know, uh, it's, I, I drink cola. It's got a 2.8% dividend. Should be part of any good portfolio if you drink soda. Uh, Oxy had a cross up. Get it while it's under 60. As we're uh, increasing the strategic oil reserve, oil comes up. This is going to go back above 60. So at 58.61, it's trading at 58.61 right now. Get it. Uh, I, I think it's a good buy. Your boy owns that one in his portfolio. MPLX crossed up. And you'll see there's a lot of um, uh, energy names on the list today. 34.03. I own this one at a significantly lower price. I think my average price is around $8. Um, I have been enjoying the huge dividend Ever since um, COVID, March 30th, I think I bought this in March. It might be around $10 average price, uh, but it's it's way down there. Um, and I've enjoyed the, the dividend ever since. If we pull up MPLX and we look at this, in fact, they just paid out dividends yesterday, 9.14%. And since 2021, I've enjoyed both that growth plus a 9.44% dividend reinvesting it the whole way through. So my, while my average purchase price goes up because I have that um, uh, repurchase brand in there, eh, who cares? You know, 10%. Uh, Qualcomm 
We had a question on Qualcomm the other day about, is it good? I like Qualcomm. Qualcomm here has a cross up. Ba, 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 ba. We're waiting for it. Um, 106.27. It is trading at 105. Do I think it goes under 100? I don't, I mean, that, that ex dividend date is a catalyst. I think you got to wait. It's not super expensive um, compared to other chip makers. This is a 11 PE, uh, AMD, and, um, and, and, and NVIDIA, significantly higher uh higher uh pe's but they came up uh cvx halliburton uh xle had a cross up fang venom which i call uh, is actually viper v-n-o-m an interesting one that came up is fas and i will post this entire list in the facebook group for you fas is a three times bull share of the financials 5634 are we done with the financials going down. Schwab had a big uh, upgrade yesterday. Um, Bank of America, Capital One Finance, who was bought by Berkshire throughout the thing. Um, you know, JP Morgan upgraded um, yesterday. Are we done with it? Well, if you are, the three times bull share of the financials at 56.34, that's a great buy. It's a great buy. It came up. Um, UMDD is another levered ETF that came up. This is the mid cap and mid caps have, you can see they've been underperforming. I mean, that's just since March it went, this is a, um, uh, ultra pro. So it's three times levered and it's down at 1698. If you like mid caps, use that one. Uh, some uh, spider sectors went through. We talked about Peloton cat, American express home Depot, ironically had a cross up, um, right before their earnings. And it was at 289.92. You're trading at 280 pre-market. So I, I didn't bring. I think I brought it up yesterday. Again, uh, last year's growth is this year's decline. Just to go back to that, Fang Diamondback Energy. This one had a cross up. Um, it is at 128.96. You passed your ex dividend date. This one has a great dividend. Uh, what is it? Seven eight percent. Uh, 7.05, a PE of five, it's energy, it's oil and gas. It's down 4% year to date, but you're getting a 7% dividend. So if you hold it for a year, maybe it's down four or 5%, but you're getting a 7% dividend. Wait for that uh, oil to go up. Um, <clears throat> into it, we're past tax time. Adobe, uh, ADP, Regeneron, uh, WBD, which is uh, Warner Brothers. This is an interesting cross up because uh, their max launch is coming up. Kind of the catalysts are done on this one. Do we go back to $9? It's ex make no mistake, this is an expensive stock. The only one making money in streaming today, I think Paramount may be making money. Um, this one is not making money. They're losing $8 billion um, this year. Uh, they have plenty of cash on hand, so it's not going bankrupt. Um, they are right in between their 52-week range of $8.82 and $18.78. So far this year, they're up 35%. Their average target price is 2018. You're tw trading at 12. It is a risk. It is 100% a risk. April Truist uh, initiated coverage with a buy at $19. The most recent price targets are 20 but it's a risk. This is a long-term play. So if you buy at 12, buy a small position. And if it goes down to 10, buy a little bit more. Because again, with the $20 price target, I think it's probably a good bet and it had a cross up here. Uh, now, mind you, the algorithm does outperform, but it still loses you money. The algorithm loses you 53%. Your average win though is 14%. So if you think that this one's going to come back over the 200 day, Say, for instance, we get a, um, a, 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 a debt ceiling deal and the market gets pumped up. You may go up a dollar on this one. You may go up a full 10% in a day just because it's speculative. Um, so play that one. The other one that came in, and I'll, I'll, again, this is all going to be on the Facebook group, but Ross Stores, uh, which is an interesting one. <laughs> uh, anybody ever go shopping in Ross Stores? All the shit's on the floor. 
I don't know who's buying shit at raw stores. Um, you know, it, it's one of the worst run uh, clearance item stores that I've ever been into. Do I find deals? Yeah. Am I better off going to the outlet malls and paying $2 more for a shirt? Absolutely 100% in my boat you are. So there's your podcast. Okay. I am driving back at some point to Atlanta at some point, and I've got a bunch of uh, – thank you, Larry. My hair is absolutely yellow. It will be white after about six more times of dyeing it. <laughs> uh, but it looks a lot better than the actual shit brown that I had yesterday, so thank you. Um, uh, let's look at WW. Wants me to look at KDP. And if you join me live, I'll, I'll do this live for you on YouTube. KDP, this is Kellogg Dr. Pepper. It has been absolutely destroyed. Um, I think they have some operational issues, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the algorithm loses you 34%. Buying and holding loses you 9%. I think this is similar to Coke and Pepsi, where it's probably if you drink Dr. Pepper or um, you use the Keurig packs, it's probably not a bad play. This is a, let's look at a weekly. I'm going to look at a weekly. Look at the long term on this one. Actually, let me take this out. Remove all annotations. Um, I had a floor right there, ironically. Right up here at 34, I said, I believe I went over this one. If it broke 34, uh, look out below. I think you look out below. Um, if we go over here to Curry Dr. Pepper... Um, it's PE is 34. That's expensive. So it, it, you know, they're making um, income 1.32 billion. Their earnings this year are expected to go down 33%. Your average target price is 38. You're trading at 32 right now. Um, you're 1% above your 52 week low. So <clears throat> WW, I think if, if you're looking to buy this one, I don't think it's bad to if it's a long-term play, and I think it should be, I don't think it's bad to slowly get in. This gap that you see down here between 15 and 18, it ain't going back to that. That's from 2018. I don't believe. Look, I mean, this is your first time you're getting to buy this stock on a weekly basis under the 200-day. Um, In my mind, I, 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 you know, the, the PE is 34. Look at Coke, P of 28. Better run business in my mind. Uh, Pepsi, P of 40. Eh, but they're up 7% year to date uh, for Pepsi. Uh, Coke is up 0.52% year to date. Um, Curry Dr. Pepper is down 9%. You might have an opportunity to play a bounce back on this one. So maybe a good one. I don't drink Keurig and I don't drink Dr. Pepper. Uh, I drink Coke and Pepsi. So that's, again, bringing it back to what you use in your personal life. Uh, if you want to trade it, I don't think it's a bad trade personally. I think there's better place in the market to kind of play your money, if you will. Um, yeah. So, okay. I will answer more questions on YouTube live. If you have any questions, let's talk about the sponsors first. Visible, if you're paying more than $30 a month for your phone bill, click on the link below. You will get $20 off your first month. I think they're still running the promotion of $5 off, a welcome bonus uh, ongoing for your service. So it goes from $30 down to $25 a month. And you get $20 off of that. If you have an eSIM phone, Simply get an eSIM, get a new number, test it out for a month. It'll cost you $5. But if you're paying like T-Mobile $45 a month, there's no reason to test out, not test out visible for $5. Test it out, do speed tests. If you're getting better speed on on uh, on T-Mobile and, and the $600, $500 a year you're spending more on T-Mobile is worth it, continue on T-Mobile. But my take Get as cheap a phone service as you can because the reality of the phone service is as long as it works, as long as it gives you access, um, you know, again, I haven't missed a call. I haven't been not, not able to get data, you know, and I travel all over the, the country. So I like it. 
personally, it's great. If you like the charts that I post here, uh, if you like my algorithm, if you like taking emotion out of your trades, try TrendSpider. Uh, there's a free seven-day trial. Sign up with the link down below. Code DSP25 gets you 25% off. I will give you access to my algorithm, which you can see here. Uh, entry in to Apple at 153. Got you out with a 17% gain here when you got you in at 126. For our algorithm is fantastic here on Apple. Uh, over two years, it gives you a 50% gain. Whereas just hold, buying and holding the asset gives you 40% gain. Uh, I give you access to my 65-minute algorithm. That is one where it is simply an eight-day EMA. Buy when it's under, sell when it's over. Um, that one provides a fantastic day trading opportunity. I give you access to my scanner. Uh, and all of my watch list lists include a core portfolio, uh, energy names that I constantly trade, and triple and double levered ETFs for you to trade as well. So either one of those sponsors, that's how you support me. If you make money, I ask that you treat me like a bartender and just tip me. Your boy, If your boy helped you, if you're going over to chat GPT and, and this fund is making you money and I'm the one that led you there, just tip me. Just hit me up. Uh, if you're going into Bard and you're you're doing that stuff, share it with the community on our Facebook group. Our Facebook group uh, actually is a place for all of you guys to share your ideas, to ask your questions. You are not alone with your questions. Sometimes I have to look up the questions that you guys give me. Uh, I'm not an expert. I'm no Jim Cramer. Uh, I'm not good at picking out Bear Stearns. Uh, <laughs> By the way, uh, 6 p.m. tonight, uh, Elon Musk interview with David Faber, who is taking over the Jim Cramer show. I am hoping, hoping that Elon Musk points out inverse, that the inverse is doing better than Jim Cramer himself. Uh, but yeah, remember to tip me. Uh, I do this stuff for free. I am working on a couple of things, but like I tell most people, uh, the fact that I'm working on it doesn't mean that it's coming out soon because overall I'm lazy. So I will notify you in the Facebook group um, when I'm traveling. I don't know if I'm taking off tonight, which would mean that tomorrow I won't do a show. Um, I don't know if I'm taking off uh, in the morning on Thursday. Who knows when I'll leave. Uh, but I'm driving back from New Jersey to Atlanta. So if you have any questions, hit me up on any of the socials. The link tree down below has all the links to my PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, um, to the uh, the special for TrendSpider, to Visible, the link for Visible. And it has all the social posts too. So if you have any questions, hit me up. Thanks, you guys. I will talk to you later.